Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Thank God that I'm not sitting in front of the camera right now. So since we don't have much daylight, you don't get to look outside. So you just have to look at something. So there it is, the living room. Now, uh, we're dealing with Job chapter 5. I already read it. And um, I want you to think about the fact that as he says, I, hang on, I got to get the word again. I wound, I got to make sure I read it correctly. I want to read that one sentence. I already read the uh, part, but I want to read it just for the sake of the video. Okay, verse 18. This is Job chapter 5, verse 18. For he maketh sore and he bindeth up. He woundeth and his hands make Heal. He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven thou shalt, there shall no evil touch thee. Now, listen to this. This is what I love about God. Picture yourself at the doctor's office. You've got a little pain, and you go to his office. He calls you in. Nurse gets you all ready, and then here comes the doctor after you waited, you know, that waiting on the Lord part can be a pain too. So here you waited for the doctor to finally stroll into your room. And he starts asking you what seems to be the trouble. and Where is the pain? And tell me all about it. And you start to explain, well, doc, this happened and that happened. And I'm feeling this and I'm feeling that. And when I turn that way, it's... So what does the doctor do? He gets his bony fingers and pokes you right where it hurts, doesn't he? And I know sometimes it's like, what the? I already told him it was hurting. Why you got to press all in there like that? So what makes you upset is that he's making you hurt worse than you did when you first came in. Because he's pushing and prodding in the troubled area. Well, sometimes God does that with us. He will allow life. He will set up circumstances to push and prod right in your area of pain. Right in the area where you are the most insecure. It is the craziest thing how he does that why he even allows it. It makes you wonder sometimes. You don't want to think of God as, a, as, as being sadistic or being cruel, but some people think of him that way. They blame him for everything that goes wrong instead of understanding that whatever God allows, it's for our good. It's always for our good. God, see, I drive this point home, I wear it out, I beat the dead horse, and I know you guys probably get sick and tired of me saying this, but God is a healing God. He doesn't just heal headaches, he doesn't just heal cancer, he doesn't just heal backaches, he doesn't just heal kidneys, he doesn't just heal organs, he heals the spirit, he heals the soul. He heals your mindset. He heals emotional scars and damage that has been done from molestation, from rape, from drug use, from, from being used out in the streets, the whole, from being abused. I mean, every area of your life, there is no no territory you own that God cannot clean out and heal. And that seems to be the main area most people neglect when it comes to going to God for anything. They'll sit in front of a psychiatrist or a psychologist and fork out the ducats so they can rehash. But the psychiatrist, neither the psychologist can heal you. I beg you guys, I'm talking to you on YouTube because our church family knows. I've worn them out with it. Go to God with your emotional scars. You will, oh my, you, you will, you, never mind. 
You'll be so grateful that somebody told you to do that. If you keep going at it, keep plugging it, that bad boy. Don't let up. Pursue God like he was a million dollar lottery ticket. Pursue him for your inner healing. When you're healed on the inner man, the sky is the limit in your life. Nothing can hold you back from your fullest potentials. Because what the main thing that holds all of us back is what we need healing from. There are people that can't get close to people. There are people who are suspicious of people. There are people who will not get out there and do a lot with their free time because they're afraid somebody's going to get on their nerves. So the safest place to stay is at home. They're running from themselves. They think they're running from people, but they're running from themselves. And sometimes the harder you run, you forget that God can keep up with your baby. He's right there no matter where you run, no matter how hard and fast you run, no matter how, how tricky you try to hide from him, you cannot hide. He's right there. God, if you run from the problem, God knows how to make the problem chase after you and overtake you and make you deal with it. But he's also a gentleman. And there does come a, a point in our lives, different areas in our lives, where God will not force us to face it. He'll nudge us, he'll push us, he'll do everything in the world until we finally, he's finally got the, that is off limits signal. When he gets that, he backs up off of that. And you got to live with those scars for the rest of your life. Unless somewhere down the road, you wake up, smell the coffee and say, okay, Lord, come on, come on and deal with me. I don't like it, but come on. Let me share this with you. Years ago, somebody had made a snide remark. You've heard this before. When they made the snide remark, it bugged me half the night. I couldn't go to sleep and I couldn't figure out why, because it wasn't a significant remark. It wasn't from a significant other that I was caught up in. We were just buddies. So I'm trying to figure out why is that bugging me so much? And I, instead of me trying to figure it out, which most of us do with our analytical selves, I finally said, Lord, <clears throat> yeah, I talked to the right one that night. I said, Lord, why is that bugging me so much? Why does that Get on my nerves. Why is it irking me? See, people irk you. People get on your nerves. Certain things they do drive you up the wall and you wonder why. And you think it's them. Sometimes it's just you. So I'm sitting up here wondering why. Doesn't make sense. And the Lord spoke to me. He actually answered me, y'all. I was like, oh my goodness. He said one word. He's not Gabby, but he said one word. Rejection. Show you how I knew it was God. I failed to see the connection. So I said, Lord, I don't see the connection between that and rejection. But if you say it's rejection, then that's what it is. And I ask you to get the rejection out at the root because I've been struggling with rejection since I can remember. And I'm tired of it having power over me, power over my reactions, power over my self-esteem, power over how I see myself, power over how I interact with people or don't. Sure enough, I started feeling this welling up in my gut and y'all listen, he did the very thing the doctors do, poking around up in there where it hurt. It started hurting. It was hurting my stomach physically. It was hurting my emotions. Tears were welling up in my eyes and I was getting so overwhelmed. I was beginning to sob and howl and the howl turned into dry heaves. 
For almost two hours, I dry heaved. Ah! I couldn't believe it. I'm like, what the heck is going on? And I, it, it dawned on me, God must be delivering me from the root of rejection. After all that, I cried and sobbed. Then the Lord commanded me without speaking in my spirit, commanded me to stand up and praise him. After I stood up and praised him, and I was feeling weak, y'all. He had me play praise music, certain songs that not only blessed him, but what ministered to me too. And when I got through, I felt like I had lost a hundred pounds. Y'all listen, I've never been the same. You talk about a whole new level of confidence, a whole new level of freedom. You know, we go from glory, from glory, the Bible says. We go from strength to strength. So no matter what you've been delivered from, there are some big boogers that God wants to get out of you. But you got to let him poke around in there where it hurts. And some of you won't do it. That's why some of you won't go to the doctor. One reason I won't go to a dentist because I don't like hurting and I know my teeth look like crap. I know it. All of us have those reserved areas that we don't want anybody to trespass on. What are you holding back from God? What are you trying to hide? You know it's not hidden from him. So in essence, what you're really doing is hiding it from yourself or hiding from it yourself. But God knows what's up. He's trying to show you what's up if you let him. Do you want to be healed? You want to be delivered? Do you want to experience true freedom and true peace? Please go to him with the pain. Let him poke around in there. Let him go down to your dirty basement where all your dark secrets are. Face him. Deal with him. That's how you get healed. You forgive. You operate in honesty and truth. Even when you're the one wrong, you face up to that. Would you be willing to do that with God? Let him take you through an inner healing and deliverance session from time to time in your lives. It'll make all the difference. You will find a brand new you that you didn't even know could exist. Been there all the time, waiting for the shackles to come on. When the Bible says we go from glory to glory, from strength to strength, it's because as we go, Shackles are being dropped off. Five, ten years later, more shackles are being dropped off. As we walk with God, we are losing weight every step of the way. That's why the Bible says, when it, that's what the Bible means when it says, lay aside every sin and the weight that so easily besets you and run with patience the race set before you. Because it's going to take patience to go from healing to healing from glory to glory, from strength to strength, from growth to growth, from freedom level to freedom level. It's going to take patience. It's going to take time. It definitely has to take God to get it done and your faith in him to let him. Have faith in God, y'all. He who has begun a good work in you will complete it. And it'll get done so much quicker when you sit still and let him do the work he really needs to do. And you face it and you own up to it. God bless you as you receive yours in time.